This read aloud is dedicated to my mom. She's always loved this silly tale. The Three Sillies Retold by Stephen Zorn Once upon a time, there lived a farmer, his wife, and their daughter. When the daughter was old enough to marry, a young man from town had been paying visits to her for quite some time. The girl's mother and father were fond of the boy, and they were sure he was going to ask for their daughter's hand in marriage. One night, the young man came to the farmhouse to see the daughter. The farmer and his wife were thrilled. This could be the night he asked to marry our daughter, whispered the farmer's wife. Let's hope so, replied the farmer. The girl's parents wanted to spend some time alone with the young man, just in case he wanted to discuss the couple's marriage with them. So they sent their daughter down to the cellar to fetch some cider for their visitor. The girl, also thinking this was the greatly anticipated night of her engagement, gladly did as she was told. In the cellar, she put her pitcher to the spout of a huge cider barrel. As she filled the pitcher, a thought struck her. If I marry this man and we have children, she thought, what will we name them? This question distressed the girl. She began reciting boys' names, Percival, Virgil, Othniel, but she didn't like any of them, so she tried some girls' names. Desdemonia? Winifred? Gertrude? No, none of them seemed right either. Lost in her thoughts, she forgot to turn off the spout of the cider barrel. The cider poured out of the barrel, overflowed her pitcher, and spilled onto the floor. But she didn't even notice the mess. She just racked her brain trying to think of names for her children. Soon her mother came down to the cellar, wondering what was taking her daughter so long. Mother, said the daughter, I was just thinking if I marry that young man upstairs and we have children, what will we name them? Hmm, replied her mother. Let me think about that with you. And she sat down on the stairs while the cider kept pouring onto the floor. After a while, the farmer came downstairs to see what was keeping his wife and daughter. He found them sitting in the cellar, lost in thought. What's the matter? he asked. Father, said the daughter, mother and I were just thinking, if I marry that young man upstairs and we have children, what will we name them? That's an important question, said the father. Let me help you answer it. So he joined them on the cellar steps. By now the cellar was almost ankle deep with the sweet cider, but the threesome barely noticed. After a while, the young visitor, left alone upstairs at the table for so long, grew curious about what had become of his host. He went to the cellar and found them sitting knee deep in cider, gazing into space. What is the matter? he asked, reaching over and closing the spout on the near-empty cider barrel. If my daughter marries you, said the father, and you have children, what will you name them? You people are the silliest folks I've ever met, said the young man. I haven't even said I wish to marry your daughter. But I'll tell you what, I have to do some traveling for a few weeks. While I'm away, if I can find three people sillier than you, I'll happily marry your daughter. Saying that, the young man left. Early the next day, he began his travels. He hadn't traveled far before he came upon a woman who was trying to push a pig up the trunk of an oak tree. What are you doing? The young man asked. He'd never seen such a thing in his life. This here's my prize pig, said the woman. I want to feed her acorns to make her nice and fat but I can't get her to climb the tree to get them. The young man tried not to laugh out loud. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, he said, I think you'll have better luck climbing the tree yourself and shaking the acorns to the ground than your pig will find them. Oh, exclaimed the woman, I never thought of that. Thank you, wise stranger. That's one silly thought the young man to himself as he continued down the road. 
nightfall, he arrived at a small town. In the center of the town, he saw an old man crawling around on his hands and knees under a street lamp as if he was looking for something. Have you lost something? asked the young man. Perhaps I can help you find it. Yes, said the old man looking up. I lost a gold coin. He continued searching every inch of ground under the streetlight. Are you certain you dropped it here? said the young man. I didn't drop it here, said the old man. This time without looking up. I dropped it in the woods. It's just that the light is much better here, so it'll be easier to find. The young man was so astonished he didn't know what to say. He just kept going on his way thinking, that's silly, number two. The young man was very tired, so after supper he got a room at the town's inn. He slept well, but was awakened very early the next morning by the sounds of pounding and crashing coming from the next room. He put on some clothes and knocked on his neighbor's door. The door opened, and much to the young man's surprise, another man stood on the other side of the threshold in his underwear. Come in, said the other man. You must be an early riser since you're already wearing your pants. It takes me hours to put mine on right. Excuse me a moment while I try again. The man's trousers were hanging on the closet doorknob on the other side of the room. He took a running start and tried to leap into them. But he failed to get even one leg into his pants and came crashing to the floor. The young man watched him try this again and again. Each time the man was sure that he'd be able to jump into his trousers, and each time he landed in a heap on the floor with his pants still hanging on the closet. Excuse me, said the man. You may find the trousers easier to put on if you hold them in your hands and step into them one leg at a time. Well, I never thought of that, said the man in his underwear. Thanks for your help. The young man left the room. That's silly number three, he said to himself, smiling at all the silliness he had encountered on his journey. After breakfast, he returned to the farmer's house and asked for his daughter's hand in marriage, and the two lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs>